everybody and welcome to today's edition of Search the Scriptures. We are in the book of First Samuel and we are on study number 17 and this study covers chapter 20 verse 1 all the way through the ninth verse of chapter 21. So if you have a Bible you may want to get that out as we go through this. We are going to look for a, three different questions here. First of all, what was David's purpose in seeking out Jonathan in this chapter, uh, particularly the beginning of chapter number 20? And what request did Jonathan in turn make of David? And what components of true friendship does the relationship of these two men illustrate? Second, what characteristic of true love does this passage reveal? And third, when human need and ceremonial obligations conflict, like they do in chapter 21 and verse number 6, and that's when uh, David receives the bread that was left over from having been put in the holy place, what guidance do we find here as to the right course to take? Let's look together at 1 Samuel chapter 20, beginning with the very first verse. 1 Samuel 20. Then David fled from Naoth at Ramah, and went to Jonathan and asked, What have I done? What is my crime? How have I wronged your father that he is trying to take my life? Never, Jonathan replied. You are not going to die. Look, my father doesn't do anything great or small without confiding in me. Why would he hide this from me? It's not so. But David took an oath and said, Your father knows very well that I have found favor in your eyes. And he has said to himself, Jonathan must not know this, or he will be grieved. Yet as surely as the Lord lives, and as you live, there is only a step between me and death. Jonathan said to David, Whatever you want me to do, I'll do for you. So David said, Look, tomorrow is the new moon festival, and I'm supposed to dine with the king. But let me go and hide in the field until the evening of the day after tomorrow. If your father misses me at all, tell him, David earnestly asked my permission to hurry to Bethlehem, his hometown, because an annual sacrifice is being made there for his whole clan. If he says, very well, then your servant is safe. But if he loses his temper, you can be sure that he is determined to harm me. As for you, show kindness to your servant, for you have brought him into a covenant with you before the Lord. If I am guilty, then kill me yourself. Why hand me over to your father? Never, Jonathan said. If I had the least inkling that my father was determined to harm you, wouldn't I tell you? David asked, Who will tell me if your father answers you harshly? Come, Jonathan said. Let's go out into the field. So they went there together. Then Jonathan said to David, By the Lord, the God of Israel, I will surely sound out my father by this time the day after tomorrow. If he is favorably disposed toward you, will I not send you word and let you know? But if my father is inclined to harm you, may the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if I do not let you know and send you away safely. May the Lord be with you, as he has been with my father. But show me unfailing kindness like that of the Lord as long as I live, so that I may not be killed and do not ever cut off your kindness from my family, not even when the Lord has cut off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. So Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord call David's enemies to account. And Jonathan had David reaffirm his oath out of love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. Then Jonathan said to David, Tomorrow is the new moon festival. You will be missed because your seat will be empty. The day after tomorrow, toward evening, go to the place where you hid when this trouble began, and wait by the stone, Ezel. I will shoot three arrows to the side of it, as though I were shooting at a target. Then I will send a boy and say, Go, find the arrows. If I say to him, Look, the arrows are on this side of you, bring them here, then come, because as surely as the Lord lives, you are safe, there is no danger. But if I say to the boy, Look, the arrows are beyond you, then you must go, because the Lord has sent you away. And about the matter you and I discussed, remember, the Lord is witness between you and me forever. So David hid in the field, and when the new moon festival came, 
the king sat down to eat. He sat in his customary place by the wall opposite Jonathan. And Abner sat next to Saul. But David's place was empty. Saul said nothing that day, for he thought something must have happened to David to make him ceremonially unclean. Surely he is unclean. But the next day, the second day of the month, David's place was empty again. Then Saul said to his son Jonathan, Why hasn't the son of Jesse come to the meal either yesterday or today? Jonathan answered, David earnestly asked me for permission to go to Bethlehem. He said, Let me go because our family is observing a sacrifice in the town and my brother has ordered me to be there. If I have found favor in your eyes, let me get away to see my brothers. That is why he has not come to the king's table. Saul's anger flared up at Jonathan and he said to him, You son of a perverse and rebellious woman. Don't I know that you have sided with the son of Jesse to your own shame and to the shame of the mother who bore you? As long as the son of Jesse lives on this earth, neither you nor your kingdom will be established. Now send and bring him to me, for he must die. Why should he be put to death? What has he done? Jonathan asked his father. But Saul hurled his spear at him to kill him. Then Jonathan knew that his father intended to kill David. Jonathan got up from the table in fierce anger. On that second day of the month he did not eat because he was grieved at his father's shameful treatment of David. In the morning Jonathan went out to the field for his meeting with David. He had a small boy with him and he said to the boy, Run and find the arrows I shoot. As the boy ran, he shot an arrow beyond him. When the boy came to the place where Jonathan's arrow had fallen, Jonathan called out after him, Isn't the arrow beyond you? Then he shouted, Hurry, go quickly, don't stop. The boy picked up the arrow and returned to his master. The boy knew nothing of all this, only Jonathan and David knew. Then Jonathan gave his weapons to the boy and said, Go, carry them back to town. After the boy had gone, David got up from the south side of the stone and bowed down before Jonathan three times with his face to the ground. Then they kissed each other and wept together. But David wept the most. Jonathan said to David, Go in peace. For we have sworn friendship with each other in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord is witness between you and me and between your descendants and my descendants forever. Then David left, and Jonathan went back to the town. 1 Samuel 21 David went to Nob, to Ahimelech the priest. Ahimelech trembled when he met him and asked, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? David answered Ahimelech the priest, The king charged me with a certain matter and said to me, No one is to know anything about your mission and your instructions. As for my men, I have told them to meet me at a certain place. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread, or whatever you can find. But the priest answered David, I don't have any ordinary bread on hand. However, there is some consecrated bread here, provided the men have kept themselves from women. David replied, Indeed, women have been kept from us, as usual, whenever I set out. The men's things are holy even on missions that are not holy. How much more so today? So the priest gave him the consecrated bread, since there was no bread there except the bread of the presence that had been removed from before the Lord and replaced by hot bread on the day it was taken away. Now one of Saul's servants was there that day, detained before the Lord. He was Doeg the Edomite, Saul's head shepherd. David asked Ahimelech, Don't you have a spear or a sword here? I haven't brought my sword or any other weapon because the king's business was urgent. The priest replied, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, is here. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you want it, take it. There is no sword here but that one. David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. Now let's look at the questions. Question one, what was David's purpose in seeking Jonathan? And what request did Jonathan in turn make of David? David? And what components of true friendship does the relationship of these two men illustrate? Well, David needed a friend. He also needed some answers. And he wanted to know, first of all, why was Saul trying to kill him? 
Jonathan was completely in the dark as to his father's plans, and he made a promise to David that he'd protect him and that he would find out the truth in exchange for David always remembering Jonathan's family in a favorable manner, and that their descendants would always respect one another. David and Jonathan put their friendship and put their loyalty to one another above everything else in their lives. Question number two, what characteristic of true loyal love does this passage reveal? Well, true love keeps its promises and it places others above oneself, just as is pointed out in 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. The third question, when human need and ceremonial obligations conflict like they did in chapter 21 and verse 6, what guidance do we find here as to the right course to take? Human need always trumps ceremonial considerations. However, it needs to be noted that the bread that David received was not the warm bread that was on the table in the holy place, but rather it was the bread that had just been removed when the new bread had been replaced. And also, David had declared himself to be ceremonially clean before taking it. So we don't just immediately discard the ceremonial things. We think it through. But when we can, and when human need is, is urgent, then it trumps the ceremonial things that may be going on uh, in, in our, our church life, let's say. Hope these studies in 1 Samuel have been a blessing to you. Uh, I hope that you continue to search the scriptures out each and every day. As you do, you will daily grow in wisdom and knowledge of the Lord. Hope you're having a great day so far. God bless. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Thank you.